what is up guys welcome back to the channel again welcome back to a new vlog i am currently here in miami florida i am feeling a lot a lot a lot better i am almost 100 percent good anyhow guys today it's a beautiful a beautiful day here in, in miami and um i'm here at the yard super early because i want to get a, a head and early start on some issues that the truck has nothing major but it does have some little things here and there like always i found uh let me show you guys I found this uh this hose here. I don't know you guys can see it. it has paint on it. Right here. It's very hard and stiff. So that's not a good idea. And I'm probably gonna change well this is no, this is a fuel line. So I don't know if I should change this in two. If I can take it off, well, let me see. But this hose here, um I'm gonna change it because it's, it's hard and it's crusty. And I do not want it to break along the way on the road. I am also gonna be changing I am also gonna be changing these things here. This is to close and open the, the, the heater for the water. Um, this one's leaking, so I'm also gonna be changing that one as well. And obviously I'm gonna change both of them. I'm not gonna just do one, I'm gonna do both of them. And another few lights that I have that have been, uh, they're losing ground, so I have to get that fixed too. You guys know this next week coming up, it's DOT week. So you wanna make sure you have everything in the truck running and you know correctly. You don't wanna have any issues especially on things that we can do. So with all that said, I hope you guys are doing good and let's start this vlog. Okay guys, so the two lines that I'm gonna be changing is this one right here that comes out from the compressor and this one that's a diesel line. These lines are a little expensive. I don't know how much they can run me because they are diesel and I don't know what this is for, I think this is water. So they can run, they're not like an air, a regular airline. So these are a little more expensive, but anyhow, it's got to be changed. So let's start taking it apart and let's go see how much is it. All right, so this is the fuel line that I was talking about. This thing is hard and it's crusty. Look at this, it's hard. It's really not a good idea to run your fuel line like that. Um, and then this is the water line that comes out of the compressor to cool down the compressor. This wasn't like this. When I took it off, I, that it broke off the core because it's so bad that it just came right off. But it did have that nick there, and that nick eventually would have started to, uh, um, it, you know, it would have opened up. And that happened because it was touching this line, and I saw it somewhere. Um, right there. It was touching this line right here. So, yep. Let me show you where this goes. So the smaller hose goes from the compressor right here, like I said, compressor to the block. That is to cool down the compressor, if I'm not mistaken. And then the other one is a fuel line that goes from right here, up here. And this is broken too. It's cracked right there. So I have to go to Caterpillar and get that fit, get that, uh, get that new, get that new wire harness or sensor, whatever that is. And uh, yeah, let's keep moving. Let's go to the other side and take off the other parts. Okay, so I finally took everything off. It didn't take me long, guys. I didn't really show you. I didn't really record how to do it because, to be honest, it's um, very explanatory. Um, so I took off the the heater lines. The, these are to close the water and to open them. I took this off because, like I said before, there was one of them that was leaking, but I'm going to replace both of them. I know that these are not Caterpillar ones. So I'm going to go to Caterpillar now to see if I can find this sensor. And at the same time, to see if I can find these straight from Caterpillar. Um, they're going to be a lot better. They're not plastic on top. I know the Caterpillar ones are... These are plastic. The Caterpillar ones are metal, if I'm not mistaken. And they just... Are, they look a lot better. They are a lot better and you can't compare, you know? So I have to look for two of these. I have to go get two brand new hoses, one water and one fuel. I gotta get those uh, done, brand new. And like I said, this sensor was broken. I don't think it's gonna, I don't think it's gonna be any issue by it being cracked like that because it's been like that and it's been working. But I'm gonna go see if they have it already and if they do, I'm gonna replace it. Okay, so an update for you guys. I am in Caterpillar. I'm trying to find my parts. 
hopefully I get everything. So as soon as I get all my stuff, see what they have, what they don't have, what I'm able to buy, what I can buy, um, I will get back to you guys with an update. After here, I have to go get the water hose and the fuel line hose done. So yeah, let's get to it. Okay guys, so I am back to the yard. Man, it's so hot, it's crazy. Um, I got my hoses done and I also got um, the new keys to shut on and off the water. Um, that together was 90 bucks and the sensor that was broken was $190. That's a lot of money. What I'm gonna do is with this sensor, um, if, I, if, if I put it on, if it works, because the sensor did not break or the sensor is not broken completely. It's just like the plastic around it, you know, the covering. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna try and, and uh, fix this one somehow. If it works, I'll leave it like that, but I already have the new sensor. It's plug and play, it's very simple to install. So if this one still works, if the old one still works, I'm gonna run it like that for a bit. And once it goes out, then I'll swap it out. So let me show you guys the new uh, lines that I, that, I, that I want to get. Okay, so here's the old lines and here are the new lines. The only issue, this is perfect, it's just that, you know, it gets this uh, curve just from being installed in one position. The only issue that I came across was that um, he did not have that 45 angle, he had a 90 which is a little more see um you see how this one is like the the curve here you can tell the curve here um it's like a lot uh sharper than this one this is a 45 this is a 90. everything else is the same straight and the other side just like this one um now the only thing that i am the only thing that i did ask for because i did put the 90 here was to make the holes a little longer so i can curve it and move it around like this one so that should give me that should give me enough slack uh to make this work um so all that said let me go try this look these are usa made you don't want to go with any chinese brand guys you go with usa made and they hold up to 4,000 psi remember that I, um i had one that was for water and the other one was for fuel so um what else what else yeah, let me go install these just in case this doesn't work. I can go somewhere else and figure this out. Okay, so it actually did work. Uh, my idea of giving it the angle. The reason why, I don't know if I said it in the clip before, but the reason why I didn't do the 45 was because he didn't have it. If not, I would have gotten the 45. Since he did not have it, I, need, I needed to solve this problem today. Today is Saturday. I'm supposed to be leaving Monday. And if you guys don't know me by now, I don't like to work on the day that I'm leaving on a trip. So I won't have to leave tired. I like to rest that day. So um, that's the reason why I got this 90. If this doesn't work, eventually, you know, the line gets brittle or breaks off or something, then I'll get a, I'll get a 45. But it shouldn't break off. This works perfectly. It's not touching the block. It's not touching anywhere behind the compressor. It's not touching anywhere up here. So it should be work. It should it should work. It shouldn't. I shouldn't have any issues at all. What I did was, like I said, to make it work, I gave this line uh, about an inch and a half more plus the angle here on the 90 so that gave it some more slack in order to get uh you know so it could work so like i said it's not touching anything it's looking fine here's where the sensor goes now i'm missing the line that goes from here to here so yeah it goes from here to here to here so yeah let me get to that okay so they're both on both lines this line right here oh my god the one coming from the compressor what a mission I guess because of the short travel it has here, it's very tight. I moved these around. I have to move uh, these these uh, 90s around in order to, to make it work and then put it back to its place. Hopefully, we don't come across any issues with that. Um, but everything's tied up good. Nothing here is touching nothing. This boat's way. There's a lot of clearance from that boat to the holes. This is good. Everything else is good. Um, so, yeah. Let me keep moving on. Let me show you guys my sensor. I am gonna I am gonna swap it out completely because I was looking at uh, my old one and uh, yeah it did break completely. I just finished breaking it off, but it, one of these little metal contacts in there was broken from the little sensor thing itself. So yeah, here's my new one, straight from Cat. Let me see if I got anything that you guys may be interested in. But um, yeah, that's your part number right there. So this is the the 
the sensor that hooks up to the harness where um, so it can show you the oil pressure this is very this is a very very important sensor so yeah it was broken already my oil pressure I mean it was working when it was on there so I'm still I'm still in the debate if I broke it while I was touching the other hoses or what happened um, I don't I know I didn't hit it hard but since it's all you know it's old this plastics all um, eating up through time and the years and the weather and washing the truck and you know the, the heat from the truck eats through this plastic so maybe it was already cracked and I finished break broken uh, breaking it but anyhow it is what it is an expensive mistake if you want to call it that way but we got our new sensor $190 straight from cat let's hook this up I'm sure they make this cheaper some type of off-brand or something because I did looked it up and I knew they made it so I looked it up just to confirm it and they do but you can't compare uh, you know cat with um, an off-brand or whatever they the hell they make out there you know so yeah so sensors on just so you guys can have an idea um, of how close the sensors to the hose where I was so I was working on this hose taking it off down right and to take this off it's tight so you have to hold on top and and you have to hold on top here and hit the bottom obviously to take it off and maybe with my hand I hit the sensor and it broke up here or with the actual you know tool doing this line that's how I broke it so um, either I, like I said either I broke it or or it was already broken and I didn't notice and I, and I finished breaking it off I don't know but anyhow it is what it is I, ha I bought the new one I found it straight from Caterpillar like I said and um, yeah so it's on everything's tied up and secure let me see down here I can maybe tie this up here as well um, so yeah let's keep moving guys we still have to do the other side do the lines let me show you guys the, the water keys that I have to open and close the heater some trucks don't have this this is very I mean I like them um, you can close the water the heat the, the water that goes to the heater you can open them I like to have these some trucks like I said they don't have them but that's just my uh, preference of choice yeah so let's keep moving okay so after finding exactly the position that I want for my water uh, keys but I don't know what you guys call these things but they're like a regular water thing to close and open or a key or something that's what I would call it uh, yeah it's all good found the position for this one found the position for that one because the ones I had were different so the positions were different very close but not touching um, this one let me show you guys how they work I'm sure you guys know but you really can't see it well nothing you turn this and you open you turn it and you close it it's really simple so now I gotta take everything back off and uh, put Teflon on it Teflon tape so let me put the Teflon tape get everything hooked up again so I can move back to the mud flaps of the trailer to see what's going on back there and let's keep moving guys so we are done thank god everything turned out good um as you can see i have te teflon on everything already everything is good everything is tight everything is perfect my next step is to put water and bleed out the air you guys know that i've, I've showed you how to bleed out the air before on these cap motors if i am not mistaken they all work through here i'm not 100 percent sure on that but they all work through here. You're supposed to open that up. Once uh, the thermostat's open, water is supposed to go in here. And if you have air, it's going to leak it out through there. Once you see this fill up with water and start dripping, then you close it up. So I'm going to fill this thing up with, I'm going to fill up the system with water and give it her, uh, I don't want to say cold start because it's not cold, but a warm start for today, you know. I'm going to start her up today so I could get fuel the new line that I put and and water in the compressor as well let's do it
So I am sure that that the sun is still crazy. I am sure that somebody's gonna go ahead and comment down below about why do I you why do I put on used tires? First of all, this guy um, he gets me really good used tires, and I only do that for one reason. To show you the tire. I don't know if you guys are able to turn the camera or not, but there is plenty, plenty of meat of thread in there left for the trailer. Plenty. That's more than enough for the DOT. That's like I said, that's plenty for the trailer. Now, why do I use them? In reality, the the correct thing to do is to go ahead and buy a set of tires. You should go ahead and buy new tires every time you need tires. Um, maybe not every, not every time because if one pops and you still have the ones that are super good you don't want to put a brand new tire because then they won't wear out evenly so why do i do this the reason for because i know somebody's gonna head and gonna is gonna ask me and somebody's gonna tell me you know something about it the reason why i do it is because i am trying to put to make the trailer ride the same height as the truck right now it is the same height or maybe it's a little lower in the back due to me having 22s in the back and the truck has 24s so i do need to get um eight 24 inch aluminum wheels because right now i have four aluminum 22s for the outside and i have four of metal for the inside that's just the way the trailer came um you guys know that i've owned the trailer now for about a year and a half and i just haven't been able to change it yet and that's part of the plan so um, once I get all my rims settled, once I get all eight of 24 aluminum wheels, I'm gonna get all eight of my tires on the back over there, the ones in the back of the of the truck. I'm gonna get them and I'm gonna put them in the trailer, and then I'm gonna get new tires for the truck. That is why I haven't uh, gone out and bought brand new tires for the <clears throat> for the for the trailer. Yeah, I know you can go ahead and you can go ahead and do it and this and that, but believe it or not, you know, just in four rims, it's like a thousand dollars, a thousand two hundred bucks. So do the math. You do, you do, um, you buy them new hours. If you buy them used, that's a different story. I really don't want to buy used rims because, um, you don't know how people treat them, you know, going on top of, you know, hitting bumps and falling into holes and stuff like that, especially on the trailer. You guys don't know how people really treat them. So that's why I don't want to go ahead and buy used rims. I'm just waiting, saving up my money so I can do that. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get um, at least four brand new. Make sure that I get the other four from somebody that I know that is not gonna come and screw me over. And then move those tires to the back, and then buy new tires for the front. So then I can ride all 24, and I don't have to do 22s in the trailer and 24s in the truck. And then after I do that, obviously I'm gonna have two 24s spares, <clears throat> which I also want to have the rim and the tire um, on the rack already. I don't wanna have them um, just the tires. I wanna have rim and, rim and tire. In case I get a flat, all I gotta do is lift it up and change out the tire. So yeah, it's always something guys. And it's all a process, you know, it's st one step at a time. If you try to take too many steps you can fail and here you guys know more than anybody that we, we do not have time to fail here you have to go and you have to go and you have to make it happen so yeah that's the reason why because i know somebody's gonna go ahead and do something about it or say something about it so anyhow now i'm gonna go ahead to fixing um i have two of my turn signals on the bottom so, so that one on the front I know it needs ground because the other day I touched the ground and it lit up like nothing, like there was something wrong with it. So I'm gonna fix the ground on that one and I'm gonna check the one on the other side is, is, is having issues as well. So let me get to that. So I took off the mud flap that was broken. Um, I'm putting on a used one that I have, but it's not broken. Or at least it's gonna hold on for now until I can go ahead and go to the truck stop, a truck stop, go to the chrome, chrome shop I don't know, Mega or uh, Miami Star. That's what I have local. And I can get my uh, brand new mud flaps. Um, these mud flaps, the ones I have in particular, they're actually hard to find and harder than what you would think. I don't know why. I think everybody buys them because they're plain. I'm the type of guy that I like plain mud flaps. 
Um, I drive a Peterbilt, and I don't like my mud flaps to say Peterbilt. Just like people have them to say Freightline or Canworth or Western Star or whatever it is that you drive. I like my mud flaps plain. I don't like my mud flaps with anything on them. So, yeah, let me install this mud flap and let's see what's next. Okay, I'm gonna take a second and just pick everything up and it's time to go home. I am super tired. I've been in the truck here all day. I've been here since like eight in the morning. Um, and I'm gonna call it a successful day. Um, I, I know it may not seem like a lot, but um, something that can be simple can actually be a little complicated at the same time, you know, and it takes time, guys. You know, you have to come, take everything apart. I have to go get stuff made. I have to go get sensors. I have to go get this, get that. And, you know, time just keeps keeps clicking and, you know, it keeps clicking and clicking. And I know it's like 7.30 now. It's starting to get dark and I don't want it. I don't want it to get dark on me and have everything, you know, outside. So I'm going to you know wrap it up for today and i'll be back tomorrow so i can finish everything up i'm also going to be doing some work on the unit tomorrow with my brother and yeah guys so with all that said i'll catch you guys tomorrow what is up guys good morning back here at the yard again and look who we have here the one and only my brother this guy is tk certified just before any of you guys go down to the comment section and start roasting me he is a really uh, TK certified person. He's not uh, Chi Chi Spede from Hialeah that is gonna come work in a unit, all right? So we took the unit apart, or well, not apart, but the actual plastics, the housings that covers all the motor and everything around it. And he's gonna help me change out, or he's gonna do it because I don't know junk, I don't know how to do this. He's gonna do, he's gonna change out the motor mounts on the unit, and uh, he's gonna check other issues that the unit may have to make sure that we are running 100%. So, let's continue. What were you saying about that one? Uh, you have the front motor mounts that are the ones that are really bad. Why that one over is not that bad? These are loose. I think those are the original motor mounts on the. They've never been replaced. How often you gotta replace them? You gotta replace them like every every certain hours, but on the hours I don't really go by the hours because what you might. Like the time that you might give the unit is not the time that I will give the unit, like running, you know? Maybe different loads take different times, different days, different months. So normally I just go by the years. So I just do it every two years. Every two years you're supposed to change them? Yeah. All right, guys. So now that my brother's helping me out doing this, um, I'm going to take a second and scrape with a wire brush. All the, for example, this, or like all the rust and all the bad paint that I have in certain places, like right here. What is this, Jose? The the the, the, comp the compressor tank, right? No, what do you call this? Heat exchanger. The heat exchanger. This tube here is bad. See all the all the paint is coming off and all that stuff. I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna I'm strip this down literally with this wire brush and repaint it. And I'm I'm gonna make sure like things like here. All that, all that bad surface rust that I see and bad paint that I see, I'm going to strip it down and repaint it. Because if you guys don't know, paint is a protective. It protects, you know, the metal from keep rusting and stuff like that. So, I'm going to make sure that I don't miss out on none of these things. And uh, service it, you know, by putting paint on it so it won't get more messed up than what it already is. Check out the older ones compared to the new ones. This is straight from TK, guys. This is not nothing aftermarket. It's straight from TK. Get your stuff straight from the factory. Don't go aftermarket because usually when you go aftermarket, finding a cheaper price, you end up paying double the price. So straight from TK. Okay, so the worst motor mount to change is the one in the back under what? The compressor? Yeah, it's right between the compressor and the motor, right? Like 
beneath the help the bell housing here so beneath the bell housing between the compressor and the motor in the back that's the hardest one to change due to spacing and my brother is telling me that um in his job um the the, the units that have the dual unit that means that you have two units inside the trailer for dual temperature they have a a housing here to what is it the the oil the oil pan on the, the compressor the oil easy. pan on the compressor is actually lower and you have less spacing than just a regular sb 230. um we actually have to use a pry bar like that look he's gonna show you hold on hold on he has to use a pry bar just like that in order to loosen that bolt in the back you need a stubby wrench you need a stubby wrench a small stubby wrench you have to cut uh you have to buy one of these uh 15, 16, 15, 16 stubby ranches, or you have to buy a regular one and cut it in order to use it because if you have a regular long one, you will not be able to take it off. And he has the, he came up with the idea. That's what exactly what we're gonna do now. Let me show you guys. So this is the original boat, right? That you cannot hook up any, no, you can hook up nothing to the bike because it's like a flat, it's flush. So now he's gonna use one of these. What would you call this? Locking nut. No, but what would you call the whole thing? Just a regular boat that That's you can... That's a regular, yeah, but you gotta have like a heavy duty. You gotta have... A heavy duty boat. You gotta have like... You have to have a heavy duty boat just like the original one, but something that you can hook up a, uh, a nut or a, a ratchet so it can take so you can take it off A completely. ratchet and a wrench. You can yeah. Easier. A ratchet and a wrench so you can take it off because since this, is, since this falls flush, on the bottom of the unit you can't hook up nothing to it so you have you, you go through all this pain in order to take it out so once you have this all you have to use is a ratchet and a nut and you should be able to change the the mount a lot faster here's the mount in reality that's the hardest one everything else it's not that it's simple but everything else is more simple than that one So this is why we changed the boat on the on that back mount. It just makes the job a lot easier when it's time to re to replace next time. Regular size tool, impact gun, and you're good to go. That just makes the job a lot easier. It is super hot. Thank God that me and my brother were able to, uh, to finish the working on the unit before the sun really, really starts to, to kick in. Everything turned out to be faster than we thought. Everything turned out to be good. We are good to go. We are ready to hit the road tomorrow. We are gonna be starting a trip tomorrow. We're gonna be picking up a load going to uh, Houston. Um, it's a load that I do every year and happens to be that tomorrow is that day, so. Yeah, guys, right now what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go and pump some diesel so I can leave everything 100% ready. And that's about it because usually on the day that you have to leave, you always come late and you always come running and you always come rushing. And I don't want to go through that. So I'm going to go ahead and pump diesel now and make sure that I am ready to hit the road tomorrow. So I will catch you guys at the fuel pump. I'm going to pump around 650 bucks. Um, they actually have the diesel here for two dollars and seventy-eight cents. Diesel has gone up incredible. It's, it's incredible uh, the difference from what I used to pay six months ago to what I'm paying now. But besides that, it is not so so bad here where I'm at now. Um, so and it's a 7-Eleven. The diesel is very green, which I like. I don't like pumping that white diesel, you know. So anyhow, guys, I'm out. Take a second now when I'm done here, I'm gonna go back to the yard and finish the video there so I can start a new video tomorrow. Now that I'm pumping diesel here, I wanna take a quick second and uh, send a huge shout out to 615 Trucker. 
you guys don't follow him and you guys like the way I post my content, he's he's a little bit, um, his content looks a little bit like mine and he likes to work on his truck like I do. Um, he doesn't pay for stuff, he goes and he buys them and he actually does them. So he does his projects as well and stuff like that. So if you guys like that, you guys are interested, follow him. Go look him up on YouTube and you're gonna like his content. Um, he's a cool guy. I actually met him here on, on, on YouTube and on social media. He's a cool guy, we've chatted before and he's a cool guy guys. So go follow him, go support his channel and go show him some love. It's finally time to go home, um, take the rest of the afternoon off, you know, just relax at home. I maybe go out for dinner tonight with my, with my girlfriend. You know, just usual, get everything ready for tomorrow and relax. So tomorrow when I pick up my load, I can be out rest up. I don't know, I don't like to pick up a load when I'm out tired and stuff like that. That is never a good idea. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, but every time you can avoid that, do that because obviously it is never a good idea. So, anyhow guys, like I said, I pump fuel. I pumped 670, uh, one dollars of fuel at a 278. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that's what I, what I said before, 278. That is not bad, fuel has gone up, incredible, but hey, it is what it is, so we have to pump it anyhow, right? We have to keep on moving. So. Well, like I said, once again, I want to take a quick second to thank you guys all for the love, for the support. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace. Keep on trucking.